Hello, my name is Tara Kachaturov, and I'm the host of Michigan Entrepreneur, where we feature businesses from startup to stellar. Today we have as our special guest, Richard Reyos, who is the inventor, president, and CEO of Rayomar Enterprises. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Tara. Well, I'm excited to have you on the program today because you're an inventor, an entrepreneur, and you have a really interesting product. But before we jump into what you've invented, which is a, a type of fastener um, with all sorts of uses, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, Tara, in the past uh, 18 years, uh, 15 of those years, I worked as a sales engineer. And what that means is I sold uh, automation components all the way from you know servo motors to stepper motors to controllers to uh, full turnkey machinery, robotic type systems, mm -hmm. assembly, inspection, vision, you know, using machine vision, as well as some robotic welding and robotic uh, deburring. Now, what industry were you selling those in? Uh, actually, I was selling it in automotive, but automotive. Uh, my larger customers were, my largest customer uh, was a semiconductor company uh, up in the Boston area. I've also sold to medical, as well as to some uh, defense uh, type industries. and. and um, some other esoteric industries like a uh, geophysicist who had some really funky robotic machine <laughs> he wanted me, to, wanted me to help him design. So, um, so and, w and what did you um, study in school? What's your background in terms I, of Actually, in my business administration is my background, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, I started out as pre-med, so uh, I guess I have a proficiency, mechanical proficiency, mm -hmm. and a little bit technically minded. So, you know, um, going from uh, uh, advertising sales um, to um, robotic automation sales was not a big big leap. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of my customers asked me to be a sales guy. His oh, sales, really? His sales engineer, yes. That's yeah. how it started. Yeah, that's all how, how it all started. Yes. Now, and then some, somewhere along the way, you decided to, to start a company. So you went from working for other people to working for yourself. Um, what, how did you make that transition? I mean, where, and where, where did you come up? I mean, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do in your company, and then how did you get to that point? Well, uh, it's, a, it's a long story, but uh, I've always been entrepreneur-minded, so mm -hmm. even when I've had uh, jobs, I've mm -hmm. always had little side things going on here mm -hmm. and there. But, uh, you know, in, in one of my um, traveling, when I had a lot of windshield time as a sales engineer, I had one of those days, you know, dealing with uh, engineering and, you know, um, people who want you to do big things, and then, you know, want to say, hey, I don't only want to pay this much for it. So I was having one of those, oh my goodness, moments, <laughs> and I was just thinking, hey, there's got to be a better way. And uh, I love camping. You know, mm -hmm. I'm an outdoorsy kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it just kind of clicked in my head that uh, um, I should um, do something with uh, these big car top cargo carriers that people mm -hmm. carry when they travel in the summer with their families. And I say, because they're, they're really a, a, a pain to put up in a car, a pain to store, and then a pain to take your stuff in and out of it. So I thought that um, it, it just started like that, an idea, you know, like a light bulb turning mm -hmm. on. Um, think of a way to easily, you know, hook that up in your car and easily take it off. And then it evolved into, you know, what we have here in front of here. And then of course, uh, being as a sales engineer, um, I knew that it had much more uh, potential mm -hmm. than just, you know, car top carrying. And so you, 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 you decided one day, I'm just going to start a company making, I mean, how did you even, you, what these things are, you might want to like pick one up and just show oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. one of these yes. things. This is like a fastener, this right? This is a fastener. A fastener. Um, and actually, um, okay, what this is, is a fastener. It's an industrial fastener. Okay, the industrial fastener market is uh, $54 billion a year. $54 billion. $54 billion with a big B. And it's segmented. Um, that's the fastener part, not anything to do with these, what we have here, car top carrying. Um, now, they're segmented like uh, rivets, nuts and bolts, stuff like that. Anything um, that attaches. Anything that attaches, so. but um, industrial. Um, but this segment belongs to um, precision metal fastener in its current form. I say in its current form because it can also be plastic. The EO2 fastener can be plastic. Uh, right now, it's an aluminum extrusion. Okay. Um, it's a really rigid fastener, but it's got the same principles as Velcro, easy on, easy off. But if you try to peel it apart, you know, literally like this particular size, literally takes, uh, I've hung 300 pounds on it like this. Mm -hmm. I ran out of weights and it still didn't fail. So um, that's how it goes. Um, so 
Anyway, uh, this being a precision, uh, precision industrial fastener, that segment is $17 billion in itself. Uh, and they, what are some examples of how this might be used in an industrial setting, like something like that? What would uh, they in an industrial setting, um, um, you can use it for fixturing. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, I sold automation as uh, products coming down the line. Mm -hmm. You want it to be set in a particular location before the robot starts working on it. Right. And you know, sometimes products are you know, this size, sometimes products are this size, so they have different set positions. So you could actually, uh, in an industrial application, you could snap fixtures on and off the line. You know, instead of using nuts and bolts, your traditional nuts and bolts, um, which you know takes a lot longer time than mm -hmm. just snapping it on and on. Uh, another application in an industrial application would be a car battery. A what? Um, a car battery. A, a okay. car battery. Um, oh. The car battery right now has a tub, so basically I would replace that tub with this. Okay, and a car battery takes about um, 20 seconds to assemble. To put on, so you put the you put the battery on there, yeah. and you got some hooks, and you got a strap, and then you turn those thumbs things. That takes about 20 seconds, and then when you put the lead terminal strips or the cable, mm -hmm. car, you know, car battery cable, that takes about another 10, 15 seconds. So you're taking a look at um, 30 seconds of assembly time, which, you know, depending on which accountant you talk to, you know, that could be you know a thousand dollars, could be five thousand, could be ten thousand dollars. Um, worth of labor, okay. So basically, in this idea, you would replace that uh, with this, the the tub, okay. This is anodized aluminum, and the anodized aluminum electricity does not bridge across. Mm -hmm. So you would put a copper strip there, copper strip there, uh, put a smaller cable directly to the uh, electrical system. So now that becomes the battery tub, okay. So instead of fifty cents, now it's a dollar fifty, except for the car battery is about seven dollars. Okay, so now seven dollars, seven fifty, and this is one fifty. So I really have a savings of six dollars, real savings. That's huge when you multiply that by eleven million or seventeen million vehicles uh, in the U.S. per year. Okay, now the, the the rub is you have to redesign the battery. The batteries are made out of separate components of plastic, and then they're fused together. Okay, so you would just make the bottom part of the battery with this shape mm -hmm. right here, and then you would put copper terminal strips there. So when you assemble the battery, instead of 30 seconds, it's one second. Just one snap. One, one snap. <laughs> so what you save there is you save $6 in real savings, 30 seconds in labor time, okay, plus the cable weighs about two pounds. That's huge in automotive speak. Um, so right now they're scrambling for grams, you know, to save weight on a car. They're You're looking kidding for me. grams. Exactly. They're okay. looking in years of two pound savings, 30 second savings, and six dollars in, in cost. Should be a no, no brainer. But you know, um, I'm a startup company. Mm -hmm. I finished development um, basically August 2010. Mm -hmm. um, we launched the initial prototype in uh, January. Uh, oh, 09. How did you come up with the idea? Uh, like I said, I had one of those I know you had the bad, moment, bad but moments. But I, actually, I came up with Did you just it, start I, sketching it out? And yes, then, absolutely. Did you? Started sketching okay. it out, uh, shared it with some uh, close friends, an inventor of mine. Mm -hmm. And this was actually back in um, 2006. I, I, I don't remember. And then went out and got your patent pending to protect. No, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> uh, well, we, I talked to my inventor uh, mm -hmm. friend, and he has a, a product called Sand Grabber. It fixes, it's the original one, fixes umbrellas in the sand, keeps it from blowing up to you know 30 knots, tests and everything. And when I first approached him on this, I wanted him to be a partner. He says, Richard, that's huge. It's too big. And he says, you know, the, you know people. Too but, big in what sense? Well, you know, when, when you're just a, a normal guy and you make an invention, there's always people. people are going to come after you. They're yeah. going to come after oh, yeah. you. Yeah. And it happened to him. His mm -hmm. was a smaller market. You know, mm -hmm. his is not in the um, billions. It's not even mm -hmm. in the hundreds of millions, but yet mm -hmm. he's had people that have tried to duplicate his, his patent. Right. But you know, he gave me some advice, and one of the advice he gave me was he made his patent so narrow, it was easy to circumvent some of the claims that he made. So you know, at least his advice is, I made my patent broad and more conceptual than you know, limiting it to particular dimensions, mm 
mm -hmm. particular angles, particular design. It's more of um, the idea of what the EO2 fastener does. So anyway, is it more I, like a process, or is it really no, the design? No, no. It's a design patent. It's a de no, it's not a de design patent. Is is uh, art? Okay, so it's a it's a it's a it's a non-provisional full utility patent, and it's based on the concept. So basically, um, there's a relationship between um, this side, which has a hook. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, you know. Notice that that's that you, you can't bend that, right? No, God, this is really it's, light. It's light. It's, alu it's aluminum. <laughs> yeah. It's light, but it's uh, it, it's twice the thickness of a traditional bleachers, and it's made like a bleacher. So, so for that's what it reminds me of bleachers at, ex at high exactly. School, yeah. It's made in the same machine as a bleacher. It's an extrusion comes uh -huh. out two hundred feet, and uh -huh. then you chop it up into pieces, uh -huh. and then you anodize it, you bake it, and whatnot. So anyway. For that to happen, there, there's a secret ingredient, um, and basically what that secret ingredient is, um, there's a polymer inside the hook side. You know, in, in mechanical engineering, hook means that nothing can come off of that. Right, right. Unless you destroy that hook. Right. Okay. Well, and then on the opposite side of the hook, there's a cam. And a cam is designed so that um, things can go in one way, and then virtually impossible to take it out any other way except for that one the way. way. It came in. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, what I have here is an easy on, easy off locking mechanism with no moving parts. You know, it's you know one of the sayings in, in, in engineering and science is, you know, the more simpler the design for it to work, the more elegant it is, and the more beautiful the design is. So anyway, in its simplicity in 2005, 2006, whenever, I don't remember when, we, it's been such a long time, I thought it was so simple mm -hmm. that even the people that did the, the car top market, mm -hmm. um, it's a billion dollar industry, Tara, just between uh, two, um, the two do top players in, in that industry, you know, it's a, it's a billion dollars in business annually. Um, they spend, it's hard to believe. They spend millions of dollars in R&D every year. So here I am, you know, no engineering budget. I'm thinking, this is so simple that, uh, you know, that they must have thought of it. Okay, so I shelved the idea for two or three years, you know, you know plus my, my other inventor said, this is so big, you're not gonna keep it from the big guys, you know, and blah, 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 and all that stuff. So I didn't, I didn't press forward, you know, I, you know I, I kind of toyed around with it, um, you know, I made this, um, prototype right here. This is like one of the initial prototypes I made. I toyed around with it with some engineering uh, friends of mine, um, but I didn't do anything with it. But um, there was a triggering event, and um, what they say is when um, there's a big recession, more companies and more millionaires are created during that downtime because it forces a lot of Innovation. A lot of innovation, a lot of innovative people out of their comfort zone mm -hmm. to do something else. And, and that's basically where I was. I said, you know, hey, I had this idea. You know, I, I yeah. see that in my customer base, you know, I'm in Michigan, right? Uh, in Michigan, in, in the last, uh, I, I don't even know what, whatever, in the last several years, we've lost a million jobs. And most of the jobs are engineers <laughs> or, right. or manufacturing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at my customer base, customer base in Michigan, you know, dwindling and dwindling and dwindling, and said, you know, I, and then I had another one of those aha moments. You know, I, I kind of like to think that, you know, um, you know, you know, I kind of mentioned, you know, when I had one of those moments, um, I, I kind of like to talk to my creator. So I, you know, whatever you know you want to call it. And, and that's when the idea popped up. And then again, it popped up again. It says, you know, do something with that idea. So um, I started uh, my own patent search. Mm -hmm. uh, Google has a nice, um, you know, patent search that's connected directly to the uh, U.S. Patent Office. Mm -hmm. And I, I also use the U.S. Patent Office as well. I find their site is horrible. I was on it last yeah, night. I cannot stand that site. Terrible. The U.S. Patent Office uh, is terrible, ugh. but the Google one is, is much more user friendly. So I, I you know, I, I didn't know Google had that. Oh yeah, it, it, yeah. There's that. a Google Patent site. Okay. Okay. So uh, it's much more uh, friendly. So I spent about I don't know a month, month or two, researching it, and then with my satisfaction, I found that there was nothing like it. Um, and then with then that, did you go get a patent? Not yet, not yet. <laughs> not that, yet. So there, there's different <laughs> steps. Uh -huh. just, so, so what I did was uh, I paid an attorney, a mm -hmm. patent attorney, mm -hmm. to do a patent search. 
Okay, so that you, you have to do your due right. diligence because it costs quite a bit of money to yeah, do for uh, full plans. Yeah. So, uh, and that was basically, um, I did my own patent search in the end of 08, and then in the uh, beginning of 09, that's when um, I got a friend of mine, um, Mike Martin, he's my original partner, and hence um, the name of the company, Ray Omar, it's a combination of both our names. Um, um, we did a uh, patent search with a regular attorney, we paid him, and he says, yeah, you know, you're, you're good to go, you should be able to patent um, this idea, and then we built uh, another prototype, not that one right there, but another prototype. Um, instead of an extruded aluminum, we machined it. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom part was made out of stainless steel instead of aluminum, and so we made that. Before uh, um, I did my provisional patent, which is the next step, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to make sure this thing doesn't fly off the car. <laughs> right. So, and you were really going, right. I mean, you were focused on that car market, right? That was, was your focused, focus My initial on the car focus market. was that because I'm familiar mm -hmm. with that. Right. Um, right. You know, um, uh, you know, I used to be in, uh, in 82nd Airborne. I used to jump out of planes. So I'm familiar with these cases. We put, you know, sniper rifles and, you know, night vision goggles. Do you and jump out stuff. with these things? No, 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 no. <laughs> in no, a parachute you, you, you of their own? This, you throw these in vehicles, that, you know. With all the gear. With all the gear, and they're just dumped in the corner, or you mm. bungee cord it, or you strap it down, or okay. whatever. And then uh, as a sales engineer, I also carried, you know, some of my more delicate instruments or sample cases uh, in cases mm -hmm. like these. So I was familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, being an outdoorsy guy, I love to camp. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to carry those big cargo bags. Um, boxes uh, on top of my car. Mm -hmm. I used to have a Yakima system when the kids were younger. Yeah, and yeah. it was um, it, it was uh, it was really a pain to put it up there. Uh, as a matter of fact, the way I put it up there, and I'm a little bit of a different parent, I would put the case up on top, and I would throw my two little kids inside the case, and then they had a U-bolt, and I would put the U-bolt, and I'd have them put the thumb screws on there. And <laughs> they had fun, and it was a lot easier for me to do it. So uh, yeah. You want to show us uh, some of the pictures because some of the pictures oh, that you yeah. brought actually yeah. show this in in use. Um, uh, yes, absolutely. So um, is that viewable? Is that is the glare okay on those? This is the uh, that is um, this is the original car. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the first car that I mounted um, the um, EO2 uh, fastener. And those on. things are just you have one side of this mounted to the car, and the and you just kind of slid the other piece in. Or uh, no, it, it just snaps it on. It, you know, ba in. basically, um, it's you know, snapped on. if you had the uh, the case, for instance, right there on the uh, um, on the hitch mount. Mm -hmm. So that's just down on the hitch mount, and then and you would just snap it on just like that, and it's nice yes. and secure. Okay. So this is the uh, this is the original uh, Explorer. Okay. Uh, there's a big case right there. Um, there's a couple of um, cases this size on there, and then there's a couple of cases here that are carry-on size cases, mm -hmm. and then this is the same car um, with a different, there's a rifle case there, and then there's a different um, case. So the cool thing about can this is... Can you tilt it just a little bit forward because of the oh, glare? Okay. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Yeah, so the cool thing is um, with the same system, you can mount, you know, that size case, that size case, and then that size case. And then uh, I'll have a picture later on um, that you can mount it um, on the wall as well. And this is the original, this is the first customer. It's actually uh, the first uh, customer. You know, <laughs> he had, he put it in his Escalade. He wanted to go camping. And he, he just throws his stuff all over the place. And when you go camping, you get dirty, you get wet. And his, his duffel bag always got messed up. So he said, wow, Richard, you know, that's a, that's a waterproof, crush proof case. You know, so he went camping, so he, he bought two. He's a shareholder as well, so he bought two, one for him, one for his dad. He goes camping with his dad, mm -hmm. okay? And then this is the uh, original car that I used for um, the first video that I shot. It's more theatrical, spy team. This is a friend of mine's Hummer. So it's just showing that, and then there are different type of crossbars or luggage mm -hmm. racks mm -hmm. that you can mount it to. Um, it doesn't have to be the one that I have. Um, this is a Saturn, and again, that's a factory OEM luggage rack, and then um, this is a HHR. How are you attaching this to that thing, though? Oh, good question. 
Um, they have holes drilled in them so you can. There's, there's a that, that crossbar is is a Yakima bar. Okay. Uh, I can say that because I'm also a Yakima dealer. Um, <laughs> they're very intrigued with this product, so they're supporting mm -hmm. me by making me a dealer. And um, in this case, uh, that came out of the factory. There's a factory luggage rack there, right. and this has a factory luggage rack. Mm -hmm. And then what you would do is. Um, in this bottom part of the rail, mm -hmm. you would drop down a carriage bolt, and then you would mount it. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. And, oh, and, right. and I what I actually that. used yeah. is um, Yakima makes a mount mm -hmm. to go on their crossbar, or on the competitor's crossbar, or on the factory crossbar. I see. So uh, I did not have to invent that. So okay. I actually used, because I'm familiar with it, I actually used Yakima systems to mount this on the luggage racks. Okay. Okay. And then um, this right examples. here, that's a smart car. I mean, absolutely no luggage. So this is actually, <laughs> it, you know, at the um, you know, smart car dealership in Bloomfield Hills right down the road. And that's, a, that's what they have as an accessory rack. Um, anyway. Oh, and here's, a, what is that? And here's ATV? an ATV. Um, Cargo rack. Yeah, <laughs> this is actually a customer in, uh, in Moab, U Utah. Moab is known for um, um, people go there in their Jeeps and they try to go up the boulders. And right. more, more often than not, they tip over, but you right. know, hey, they keep going in. <laughs> <laughs> but they do a lot of uh, off-road. And this guy found me on the internet and he says, hey, you know, that's a cool product. Uh, I, have, you know, I have a Pelican case. So I, I sold him the rails separately. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he mounted it on the case that he had purchased, a Pelican case that he had purchased and then he uh, mounted it on this ATV. So he put it on this factory, that's a factory right. rack. Uh -huh. So he attached my bottom rail there and then- and Snapped it on. Yep, and then, the, and then the snap top rail goes in the bottom of his case like this uh -huh. and then it just snaps on and off, okay? And then here, here's an application I'm developing for the fire, firefighter industry. And basically um, what it does is um, they have a rapid intervention team. Uh, the way they fight fires is, um, you know, guys go into the fire, uh, the building, mm -hmm. fight the fire, and they're supposed to have a rapid intervention team that watches the firefighters, you know, fight the fire. And their sole function is, if there's a man down situation, you know, they extricate the man down. And so what they have to do is, they have, they lay down, what, how they do it now is they lay down a tarp and they throw all these extricating tools in there, axes, picks, sledgehammers, halligan tools, ropes, extra air tanks. It's about, it's over a couple hundred pounds of, of tools and they lay it down in a tarp and then um, in their personal turnout gear, which is what protects them from the fire, and their air pack, they got 70 pounds of equipment on them already. Okay, so the idea is if, if there's a man down, they got to carry all these tools around and then you know, take care of the man down. Well, that takes a lot of energy. By that, that point, you may have two men down <laughs> instead right. of, you know, just yeah. one man down. Yeah. So um, what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to take, you know, some of these cases and then containing all their gear in it mm -hmm. and then snapping it into an industrial hand truck, much nice. more ergonomic. Because yeah. right now it takes a couple of guys, they're manhandling this. So with, with this tool, you can go up and down stairs. And then when you need the case, you can snap it off. That's okay. brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. I know we only have a couple of minutes left, so I might want to go through some of the okay. other pictures. Okay, and this, this one is just showing it, uh, you know, how the industrial. military uses it. They use it, use it as a rifle case. And that's a neat one. And then this is my the display. Yep. So. And you can see the wall mount. And then there's one right there that's upside down. And then there's that rapid intervention cart right there. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. That'd be great, like, you know, um, like for just equipment inside of a fire house where you exactly. have stuff and exactly. you can just pull it, yank it off yes, the wall. Yes, exactly. Pull, Sw yeah. SWAT teams and yeah. uh, EMS, they use these, you know, your ambulance, they put their um, first you, aid kits. Are you, selling this all to, are you selling this all out and about? Are you uh, for full um, production? Are you? I, I am full production, yeah, and, yes and yes and no, I'm selling all out and about. Um, and you're producing it in Michigan, right? Exactly, Good exactly. <laughs> the, the, this is coming out of uh, AA Coa. Uh, it's, a, um, it's an extrusion company in Niles, Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, um, what I'm doing now since August 2010, I, initially I was going to market it directly out on the web. Mm -hmm. And I have an e-commerce site and you can purchase it there. 
And then in meeting some other business people mm -hmm. that have mentored me in, in different ways, they said, go um, business to business. So I have actually some big deals um, that are going on. And one of the uh, first licensing agreement that I'm going to get is actually um, automotive packaging. Mm -hmm. Packaging, um, it's not an automotive, I can't say what it is, but a vehicle part. Mm -hmm. uh, and the part's actually not going to be aluminum, it's going to be plastic. And that's just royalty. That's in the, you know, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in royalty. That's fantastic. So, yeah, that's so that's fantastic. actually the, my first big customer. That's great. And, yeah. and you only see more on the horizon, right? No, I only, I only see more. I have a <laughs> sol solar, uh, solar panel uh, roof integrated uh, product uh, in the horizon. The Excellent. rip carts in the horizon. Um, actually, uh, easy on, easy up armor. Uh, talk to General Dynamics Land Systems, BAE, Navistar, Oshkosh Truck. And they're kind of interested in using the EO2. Military. Uh, this part of it will be uh, integrated into an armor plate. And then that's going to be on the vehicle, and you can snap on different armor systems as needed. That's pretty brilliant. Yeah. Pretty brilliant. Lots of different Thanks. things going on there. Thanks, you know, Sarah. I know we just have a minute left, and I'd love to talk about this more. Oh, yeah. It's fascinating. What a neat company, and all these different things that you, you know, all these different uses for what you've created. And you're a great Michigan inventor, which is really neat in doing business here in Michigan. One last question for you. What's your advice to entrepreneurs? Because, you know, you had this on the back shelf, brought it out of, you know, um, back and you have a company now because you pursued your idea. What's right. your advice? Um, <laughs> my, my biggest advice is keep the passion alive. Um, it's, your, it's your baby, it's your product, it's your idea. Uh, be passionate about your, your product, uh, believe in yourself and continue to press forward and do the research. Always do the research, always believe in, 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 in what you've come up with and press forward um, because uh, that's, I think, you know, I've read some books on, on other great men, you know, anywhere from, you know, Bill Gates to uh, the Colonel with Kentucky Fried Chicken to um, Mike, our own Mike Illich with a little, little Caesar's Pizza. Uh, a lot of people around them don't believe, but they kept the belief and look where they're at now. Well said. Thank you so much, Richard Rios. Um, Thanks, Tara. Absolutely. If you'd like more information about our program, please visit us at www.michigananentrepreneurtv.com. Please join me again in the future when I interview another enterprising entrepreneur. Until then, wishing you the best of business.